This is TCR, TroyCommunityRadio.com. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN. Time now for the Mayor's Report on this Saturday morning, and it wouldn't be the Mayor's Report without Mayor <laughs> Michael Beamish. And he is here in the studio, <laughs> and uh, good morning to all those who are listening today. Morning to you, Clint. Good morning, David, and everybody on staff here. Hey, uh, last weekend, pretty busy weekend, a lot Oof. of uh, bicycles in downtown Troy. Oof. Some creative costuming, too, with those bicycles. You know, the color, the, the pageantry, uh, everything about that tells us that uh, this could become a hit in Troy for future years. I think it's going to grow. Uh, we had Rock the Bike uh, Music Fest going on, and we had the uh, Walk to End Alzheimer's uh, going on. There, was, there were a lot of things, uh, a variety of activities uh, that were going on on this past weekend. Now, uh, we're going to talk about it coming up here in just uh, a couple of minutes, but uh, this weekend is no exception. Uh, it's going to be another busy weekend. But first, you had council this week. Let's talk about that. Well, we did have council, and we had all nine members of council present, so uh, they were part of the decision-making process. We, had a, we started with a, a number of resolutions. A lot of them were collected together, but I'll talk about that in a minute. But we did have a public defender agreement. It's been the same agreement we've had for years uh, in terms of the, it was $20,341, but that's been like that for no increase for, I don't know, a number of years. And, of course, council moved forward 9-0 on that one. Uh, we did have to uh, buy, uh, have an emergency uh, to the county uh, to accept tax levies for both Troy City School District and the Miami East District since they're combined in, in the area of Troy. And that passed 9-0 as emergency piece of legislation due to the time of dates that they needed to submit. Gotcha. Um, I mentioned that we had three of our resolutions really combined. It also deals, it deals with the Wilson annexation, about 33.4 acres on Washington Road. And, and when I say three combined, each of them have to have a separate resolution. All three were emergencies. Uh, one talks about the statement of services that would be provided. The other is the buffering requirements around the area. And then, obviously, the consent to, to, uh, to move forward with the annexation. All three of those were emergency. All three passed 9-0. Um, we did have a report from the Assessment Equalization Board related to uh, the sidewalk estimated assessments for the North Market Street Improvement Project. And we have an equalization board. They listened and they submitted to council for approval and, again, uh, did a nice job. So uh, we thank them. These are three volunteers that come in that have some experience and listen and make sure the assessments are correct. And uh, council supported them 9-0. Um, the, bi the big one was an another emergency, but this is important to our downtown, and we both, all, all of us, know how important the downtown is to uh, our vitality in Troy. Uh, it was a, a loan assignment, reassignment, to Steve Smith and Melanie Alsace Smith uh, for the Dye Building, where the Caroline is housed. But uh, the Smiths are, are going to purchase that, accept the loan as, as is, and move forward with the improvements that are in the Dye Building. It's, it's, it's great for Troy. It's great for the Smiths. And It'll be in their good hands. It'll be in their good hands. They, we all know they take pride in their restaurant business. They take pride in the downtown. Uh, great people. And I'm glad that, that council approved that 9-0 uh, to move forward. And that was emergency, so that, that process can get completed. Um, we will have, we did have one ordinance, but it moved to a second reading, and that's because we will be having at the next council meeting on October 2nd a public hearing, and that's to deal with a rezoning on Robin Hood Lane going from an R4 single family to an OR office residential uh, designation, trying to uh, jumpstart the life of that Sherwood area. Uh, a little bit now. A lot of discussion still remains, so if you're interested in that area and want to share your opinions, the public hearing will be on uh, October 2nd at the council meeting. 
And that pretty much uh, took care of uh, our council agenda. Okay. Now, uh, you helped kick off an event here at the beginning of the week, uh, the Heroin Opiate Awareness Week. It was held at the uh, Miami, Troy, Miami County Public Library. Um, each day, the first uh, the day, they had different uh, uh, topics, themes. Uh, and again, it was just to try to bring awareness that we do have this problem. Uh, we don't have our heads in the sand. Uh, we are trying to make a difference. And uh, I was uh, given the opportunity to come and talk about the intervention, prevention, and education piece, which was the Monday kickoff. Uh, and it, it, it's just another way of uh, not only showing our community what we're trying to do, uh, not only in Troy, but throughout Miami County. We had law enforcement people from around the county there. And uh, it just lets people know we are aware there is a problem. And we are trying to do everything we can to make a dent in that epidemic. That's a good thing. Uh, we had uh, kind of alluded to a little while ago with uh, this past weekend being busy. So is this weekend. A lot of things happening here. Uh, you've got the Elks 5K, uh, some activity over at Duke Park at the... Uh, the mountain bike course, and also Rhythm and Roots going on at the Hainer. Boy, Clint, you just highlighted all three things I was going to share. You well, know, I, I gave the names. I didn't say what all we were doing. Well, <laughs> one goes on the bike path. One goes on the uh, mountain bike uh, trail. And, and uh, so the, the bike path has a 5K Elks run, uh, run or walk. And then at 1230 at Duke Park, uh, the Timba. The uh, Mountain Bike Association is going to have their uh, kind of ribbon cutting uh, and bike race. And then that will be a really neat event uh, going on at Duke Park. And throughout. This, now this time it's going to be dry. Well, yeah, that, that's and a good sunny. point. You bring, we have probably had to cancel this at least uh, three times that I know of. So this is for maybe fourth time a charm. Uh, let's hope. Uh, Fingers crossed. And it'll, it's scheduled to kick off the race at 1230. So if people are interested in seeing that, that should be a fun event. But also, if we go down to the Troy Hainer Cultural Center, they have a big event. They got a couple music stages. They got activities going starting around 11 o'clock this morning uh, and going through the, uh, e the early evening hours. Um, just all sort of Rum River blend. I can keep going on and on, but uh, just as a good opportunity, beautiful treasure of Troy, uh, great opportunity for people to enjoy the uh, music entertainment value, along with the beauty of that building, just to walk around and see the treasure that it is. And they've got some food trucks that will be set up there, uh, the entertainment, plus a, a vinyl... Um, yeah. Uh, display that is inside of uh, records. Well, we, again, we just hope for great weather. Um, and But uh, it is a wonderful event. It's a good time to come down. It's not that far from our downtown, you know, and it is one of our uh, beautiful treasures of Troy. Well, there's no way that we could have anything but good weather. Linda Lee Jolly has made sure of that down at the Hainer Cultural Center for this. For that's, this event. That's right. A <laughs> jolly good fellow and a jolly good time we will have. That's that's a good one. Now, uh, kind of wrapping up here a little bit, uh, we are coming to the close of summer. <laughs> and uh, before you know it, we're going to be doing some raking and uh, need to do some cleanup out of the cemetery, too. Well, uh, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, here we are heading into the fall season, and fall season means leaves and and uh, so I would like to ask everybody, both uh, at the, uh, that if you have uh, uh, any kind of uh, wreaths or decorations or other items you have placed in either the Riverside Cemetery or Rose Hill Cemetery, that we're asking you to take and remove those uh, for the cleanup process as we prepare for the fall and the raking of the leaves and all that, so that uh, if you could do that by October 15th, uh, that would be very appreciative 
Uh, and then by November 15th, we'll have that cleaned up and people can go back and um, uh, put their cemetery decorations back out okay. to, for their loved ones. So that, that's something. If you have questions, and I would recommend that you do this, call the cemetery department and uh, just ask them what kinds of things are permitted, what things might not be permitted so that we don't have any kind of uh, bad feelings. Uh, you know, cemeteries are there for a reason, and uh, loved ones are there, and we want to respect them. All right. Now on the leaf collection, <laughs> now the uh, Dye Mill Road facility is going to be open later this year. Yeah, well, we're going to keep that open until December 1st, uh, Dece December 2nd, I believe. Um, so there's plenty of opportunities to take things out there. Uh, if you're a Troy resident, free of charge. Um, but we're also beginning that process, and I think down the road we'll have our street foreman, Jerry Molins, come, and we'll do a live remote and show people how uh, the proper way of taking care of sticks and bundling and leaf collection and keeping it away from storms. So all those things we talk about every year, but it's a good reminder for all of us. But we're going to be starting, it doesn't seem possible, but we're going to start that whole process with round one on Monday, October 2nd. Wow. Uh, again, council meeting night, but also that's when uh, we're going to start at one end of the town and keep moving forward. So if the leaves start to fall, put them out, we'll pick them up, and we'll do a, a number of rounds uh, throughout the city over a period of time. But uh, we'll, we'll have another uh, opportunity to show people and talk about uh, proper care and, and to help the city workers in collection of those leaves. All right. Yeah, you, you look out the window now, and uh, the trees uh, still pretty green. They're starting to get that little twinge of yellow in them. That's so right. they are starting to turn. So. Well, it, it, we do have to admit that we finished the summer season. We're now into the fall season and heading towards that winter season. Well, you're saying winter, but we're still wearing shorts because it's, it's warm out there. Hey, Mayor, thank you so much for stopping it, in this morning. It's always a pleasure to be here and share. Thank you. This has been the Mayor's Report. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN.